The Kadambas Kanada, Kadambaru 345 to 525 CE were an ancient royal family of Karnataka, India, that ruled northern Karnataka and the Konkan from Banavasi in present-day Uttara Kannada district. At the peak of their power under King Kakutsavorma, they ruled large parts of modern Karnataka state. The dynasty was founded by Mayarasharma in 345 CE which at later times showed the potential of developing into imperial proportions, an indication to which is provided by the titles and epithets assumed by its rulers. He was the grandson of Veera Sharma and son of Bandushina. King Mayarasharma defeated the armies of the Pallavas of Kanchi possibly with help of some native tribes. The Kadamba fame reached its peak during the rule of Kakasthavarma, a notable ruler with whom even the kings of Gupta dynasty of northern India cultivated marital alliances. Tiring of the endless battles and bloodshed, one of the later descendants, King Shivakati adopted Jainism. The Kadambas were contemporaries of the western Ganga dynasty and together they formed the earliest native kingdoms to rule the land with absolute autonomy. The dynasty later continued to rule as a feudatory of larger Kannada empires, the Chalukya and the Rashtrakuta empires, for over 500 years during which time they branched into minor dynasties known as the Kadambas of Goa, Kadambas of Halasi and Kadambas of Hangul. During the pre-Kadamba era the ruling families that controlled the Karnataka region, the Mauryas, and the Satavahanas were not natives of the region and the nucleus of power resided outside present-day Karnataka. The Kadambas were the first indigenous dynasty to use Kannada, the language of the soil, at an administrative level. In the history of Karnataka, this era serves as a broad-based historical starting point in the study of the development of region as an enduring geo-political entity and Kannada as an important regional language. Their legacy was so impressive that even the Vijayanagara rulers who fought the Deccan Sultanates hired descendants of the Kadambas to manage their Goan military naval fleet. History There is no shortage of myths about the origin of the Kadambas. According to one account the dynasty was founded by one Trilochana Kadamba also known from the Halsi and Dagamba records as Jayanta who had three eyes and four arms. He was born out of the sweat of Shiva, which had fallen under a Kadamba tree and hence his name Kadamba. According to another myth, Mayarasharma himself was born to Lord Shiva and Mother Earth and had three eyes. Most of the inscriptions of the Kadambas mention Skanda and his Matrs mothers. According to the Talagunda inscription, the founder Mayarasharma was anointed by the six-faced god of war, that is Skanda or Kartikya. According to Grama Padhati, a Kannada work dealing with the history of the Tulu Brahmanas, Mayarasharma was born to Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvathi under a Kadamba tree in the Sayadri Mountains and hence the name Kadamba. An inscription of the Nagarakonda Kadambas, a later descendant dynasty, gives a legendary account and traces their lineage back to the Nandas. According to the inscription, King Nanda who had no heir prayed to Lord Shiva in the Kalash mountains when a heavenly voice advised him that two sons would be born to him, would bear the name of Kadamba Kula family, and they should be instructed in the use of weapons. There are two theories to the origin of the Kadamba dynasty, a native Kanadiga origin and the other a North Indian origin. Mention of the North Indian origin of the Kadambas are only found in their later records of their offshoot descendant dynasty and is considered legendary. The earliest record making this claim is the 1053 and 1055 inscriptions of Harakesari Deva which are copied in inscriptions thereafter, describing Mayarasharma as the progenitor of the kingdom who established his might on the summit of Mount Hamavat. But this theory has not found popularity as there is no indication of this account in any of their early records. On the contrary, the family derives its name from the Kadamba tree that is common only to the South India region. Historians are divided on the issue of the caste of the Kadamba family, whether the founders of the kingdom belonged to the Brahmin caste as claimed by the Talagunda inscription, or were of tribal origin. A claim has been made that the Kadambas were none other than a tribe called the Kadambu, who were in conflict with the Shara kingdom of modern Kerala. The Kadambas find mention in the Sangam literature as totemic worshippers of the Kadambu tree and the Hindu god Subramanya. While some historians have argued that they being of Brahmin descent made Mayarasharma's ancestors natives of northern India, the counter-argument is that it was common for Dravidian peoples to be received into the Brahmanic caste during early and later medieval times. Being native Kanadigas, the Kadambas promptly gave administrative and political importance to their language, Kannada, after coming to power. 
It is thus claimed that the family of the Kadambas were undoubtedly of Canaris descent and may have been admitted into the Brahmanical caste. The Naga descent of the Kadambas has been stated in early inscriptions of King Krishna Varma I II, which confirms the family was from present day Karnataka. Inscriptions in Sanskrit and Kannada are the main sources of the Kadamba history. The Talagunda, Gundanur, Chandravali, Halasi, and Halmidi inscription are some of the important inscriptions that throw light on this ancient ruling family of Karnataka. They belong to the Manavya Gotra and were Haradiputras lineage, which connects them to the native Chudas of Banavasi, a feudatory of the Satavahana Empire. Inscriptions of the Kadambas in Kannada and Sanskrit ascribed to the main dynasty and branch kingdoms have been published by historians. The Kadambas minted coins with Nagari, Kannada, and Grantha legends, which provide additional numismatic evidence of their history. Kadambas were the first rulers to use Kannada as an additional official administrative language, as evidenced by the Halmidi inscription of 450. Three Kannada inscriptions from their early rule from Banavasi have been discovered. Several early Kadamba dynasty coins bearing the Kannada inscription Veera and Skanda was found in Satara collectorate. A gold coin of King Bhagiratha CE bearing the old Kannada legend Shri and Bhaji also exists. Recent discovery of 5th century Kadamba copper coin in Banavasi with Kannada script inscription Srimanaragi on it proves the usage of Kannada at the administrative level further. One of their earliest inscriptions, the Talagunda inscription of Santavarma, 450, gives what may be the most possible cause for the emergence of the Kadamba kingdom. It states that Myrasharma was a native of Talagunda, in present-day Shimoga district and his family got its name from the Kadamba tree that grew near his home. The inscription narrates how Myrasharma proceeded to Kanchi in 345 along with his guru and grandfather Virasarma to pursue his Vedic studies at Agataka school. There, owing to some misunderstanding between him and a Pallava guard or at an Ashvasanstha a place of horse sacrifice, a quarrel arose in which Myrasharma was humiliated. In high rage, the Brahmana discontinued his studies, left Kanchi, swearing vengeance on the impudent Pallavas, and took to arms. He collected a faithful group of followers and routed the Pallava armies near Srisilam region. After a prolonged period of low-intensity warfare against the Pallavas and other smaller kings such as the Brihad Banas of Kola region, he proclaimed independence. Unable to contain him, the Pallavas had to accept his sovereignty. Thus in an act of righteous indignation was born the first native kingdom of Karnataka, the Pallava king Skandavarman condescending to recognize the growing might of the Kadambas south of the Malaprabha river as a sovereign power. Scholars such as Mores and Sastri opine that Myrasharma availed himself of the confusion that was created by the invasion of Samudragupta who in his Allahabad inscription claims to have defeated Vishnugopa of Kanchi. Taking advantage of the weakening of the Pallava power, Myra appears to have succeeded in establishing a new kingdom. The fact that Myrasharma had to travel to distant Kanchi for Vedic studies gives an indication that Vedic lore was quite rudimentary in the region at that time. The recently discovered Gudnapur inscription states that Muryasharma's grandfather and preceptor was Virasarma and his father Bandhushina developed the character of a Kshatriya. Myrasharma's successor was his son Kangavarma in 365 who had to fight the Vakataka might to protect Kuntala. He was defeated by Vakataka Prithvisena but managed to maintain his freedom. His son Bhagiratha is said to have retrieved his father's losses but Vakataka inscriptions do not attest to this. His son Ragu died fighting the Pallavas. He was succeeded by his brother Kakasthavarma who was the most powerful ruler of the dynasty. He maintained marital relations with even the imperial Guptas of the north, according to the Talagunda inscription. One of his daughters was married to Kumara Gupta's son Skanda Gupta. His other daughter was married to a Vakataka king Narendrasena. He maintained similar relations with the Batari, the Alupas of South Kanara and the Western Ganga dynasty of Gangavadi according to the Talagunda inscription. The great poet Kalidasa had visited his court, after Kikasthavarma only Ravavarma who came to the throne in 485 was able to build upon the kingdom. His rule was marked by a series of clashes within the family, and also against the Pallavas and the Gangas. He is also credited with a victory against the Vakatakas, which helped extend his kingdom as far north as the river Narmada. The crux of their kingdom essentially consisted of large areas of Karnataka, Goa and southern areas of present-day Maharashtra. After his death, the kingdom went into decline due to family feuds. The Burr plates of Kadamba Vishnuvarman call Shantavarman, 
the master of the entire Karnataka region. The Triparvatha branch that broke away in 455 ruled from Marad in Belagavi for some time and merged with the main Banavasi kingdom during rule of Haraverma. Finally the kingdom fell to the power of the Badami Chalukyas. The Kadambas thereafter became feudatories of the Badami Chalukyas and later the Rashtrakutas and Kalyani Chalukyas. The successors of Myrasharma took to the name, Varma, to indicate their Kshatriya status. Coins Kadamba coins were one the heaviest and perhaps purest of all medieval Indian gold coinage. They issued two types of gold coins, those which were punch-marked and others which were die-struck. During 1075–1094 CE, Shanti Varma, issued gold punch-marked coins and in 1065 CE, Toyamadeva, issued die-struck gold coins. Punch-marked gold coins Kadamba punch marked gold coin issued in name of Jaisima II Jagadekamala. Shalukya. Coin consists of a central punch mark of Hanuman, and four retrospectant lions. Two prominent punch marks create two Sri alphabets depicts goddess Lakshmi in Kadamba script Kannada script, die struck gold coins. In 1065 AD, Kadamba's Toyamadeva issued first die struck gold coins. The gold coin of Kadambas depict god Hanuman, inside lined circle and dotted circle, flanked by two choris and conch. Also include the figures of sun and moon. Below is the legend Nakara Nagara, the deity of Bankapura, Nagareshwara in Kannada script. They have been definitively attributed to the Kadambas because they not only have various Kadamba symbols, such as conches and chakras, but one of the epithets on the coins, Sri Dosharashi, is known from inscriptions to have been used by the Kadamba king Krishnavarma II ruled 516-540. Other coins with the legend Sri Manarashi were also found, along with anepigraphic coins that is, coins without any legends featuring flowers, chakras, and conches. The lotus, chakra, discus, and conch are all symbols of the god Vishnu. Kadamba inscriptions frequently invoke Vishnu, indicating they must have been devotees of this deity. The identity of the king named Sri Manarashi has still not been determined. The coins are perhaps the earliest ones to use Kannada letters, a confirmation that the Kadambas were the first ruling dynasty native to Karnataka. <laughs> Kadamba coins and the earliest Kannada inscription The Halmidi inscription was the earliest known epigraph that showed the early usage of Kannada script, Kadamba script. The stone inscription found at Halmidi has been assigned to C450 CE and belongs to Kadamba ruler Kakasthavarma, whose reign is estimated to be between 435 CE to 455 CE. In the year 2006, the Jalagars, the San Sivers family, from Tamil Nadu, yielded around six Kannada inscribed potent coins from the riverbed of Virata in Sursi Taluk, which is in Uttara Kannada district. The legends could not be satisfactorily deciphered by Sri M. Prabhu of Mangalore due to the poor chipped condition of coins, and was read Sri Manaragi. Later, when more coins came to limelight, the next year, he managed to attribute it to the Kadambas of Banavasi. The Banavasi village, which is 22 miles 35 kilometers away from the Sursi town was the ancient capital of the Kadambas of Banavasi. Banavasi was also known as Jaldurga. In the Ihole inscription of Palakeshin II, the Virata River encompassed the Banavasi town in all the four directions to form a natural water port and hence the name Jal water Durga port. For the next two years 2007 the Jalagars made a headway and yielded Satavahana potent coins bearing elephant, quadri-directional symbol in quantity above 5,000 pieecs along with few hundreds of Kura potent coins bearing bull, bow and arrow symbols. Most of the elephant Satavahana coins were of rulers Siri, Satakarni and Putamavi. The Satavahaha fractions of up to 50 mg weight, with similar elephant motif and illegible legend were also obtained. The bull, discus potent coins were issued mainly by Rajno Vishnurudra though other rulers names such as Vishnurudra Putra, Vasithi Putra, Satakarni etc. exist. Third of the series, the inscribed Kadamba potent coins were found too, but in small quantities, estimated to be around 100 pieces with four unique legend types. Only the coins bearing the legend Sri Manarashi and Senior Dosharashi have been published yet. 
There exist around 10 die variations of the same. Other coins such as bolt, trident goad coins in bell metal of tetradram standard bearing legend Vinakata Brahmananda were found in 5 to 6 numbers, copper and lead coins of Chudakulananda, Mulananda and Sivalananda etc. are seen seldom in those river beds but in two lesser numbers. Copper coins of Chudas were not known hitherto. Since Banavasi was an important religious site of sanctity, the site attracted old age pilgrims from distant places who spent their last days in the holy site. They offered coins such as Guptas, Kushan, Roman, Western Shatrapas, Vijayanagaras and Hoysalas etc., which stands evidence to this. As far as the chronology of these Banavasi Kadamba coins concerned, Sri Dosharashi coins follow Sri Manarashi coins as evidenced by the script style. Since Dosharashi epithet was adorned by Ravavarma, the Manarashi coins are either issued by the predecessors Shanthavarma or Murageshavarma. This is understood by the script style of Manarashi coins that resembled more that of Halmidi inscription. Moreover, Halmidi inscription is assigned to Kakushthavarman. These potent coins are observed in varied weights such as 200 mg to 400 mg stanadard. The fractional coins weighed around 100 mg and contained religious symbols such as discus, conch and lotus, which are the icons of Lord Vishnu. Their Talagunda inscription had an invocation of Lord Shiva while the Halmidi and Banavasi inscriptions started with an invocation of Lord Vishnu. Moreover, their temple, the Madhukashwara, also seemed to have undergone several changes over a period. The initial statue is believed to be of Lord Vishnu while Shiva Linga is currently worshipped. Another tale about this place involves the slaying of demon Madhu by Lord Vishnu at the behest of Lord Shiva. This tale is mentioned in the Puranas. So, the religious symbol such as conch, discuss and lotus only signifies the fractional value of coin, which is seen even in the Hanas and Haggis of the Alupas and Gangas, who were the contemporaries and also in time, the feudatories of the Kadambas of Banavasi. It is impressive to see the shift of script usage to Kannada, from the Satavahana Brahmi. Satavahana Brahmi was used by the Chudas, Satavahanas and the Kuras respectively as the official script. It is quite possible that Kannada was in use prior to the rule of the Chudas but Brahmi was the script. The usage of Kannada script in coins and inscriptions is the gift of the Kadambas and Tren continued in the whole of then Karnataka. The stone tablets recently found in Parkala, Udupi Taluk, attests the usage of Kannada around the same period 5th century CE. Administration The Kadamba kings called themselves Dharma Maharajas like the Satavahana kings. Dr. Mores has identified various cabinet and other positions in the kingdom from inscriptions. The Prime Minister Pradhana, Steward Manevergade, Secretary of Council Tantrapala or Sabakarya Sachava, Scholarly Elders Vidyavridas, Physician Deshamatya, Private Secretary Rahasyadakaritha, Chief Secretary Sarvakaryakarta, Chief Justice Dharmadyaksha and other officials Bojaka and Ayukta. The army consisted of officers like Jagadala, Dandanayaka and Senapati. A crown prince from the royal family helped the king in administration. Princesses of the royal family were appointed as governors of various provinces. King Kakasthavarma had appointed his son Krishna as viceroy of Thriparvatha region. This later proved detrimental to the kingdom as it gave opportunity for breakaway factions in the kingdom. The kingdom was divided into mandalas provinces or desha. Under a mandala was vishayas districts. A total of nine vishaya have been identified. Under a vishaya were mahagramas and dashagramas Mahagrama had more villages than Dashagramas. One sixth of land produce was collected as tax. Taxes were collected as Perjunka, levy on load, Vataravula, social security tax for royal family, Bilkoda, sales tax, Kirakula, land tax, Panaya, beetle tax, and other professional taxes on traders, etc. Topic: Culture. Topic. Religious condition The Kadambas were followers of Vedic Hinduism. The founder, Myrasharma was a Brahmin by birth but later his successors changed their surname to Varma to indicate their Kshatriya status but they used to marry Brahmins only. Some Kadamba kings like Krishna Varma performed the Ashwamedha horse sacrifice. 
Their Talagunda inscription starts with an invocation of Lord Shiva while the Halmidi and Banavasi inscriptions start with an invocation of Lord Vishnu. They built the Madaksvara temple which is considered their family deity. Many records like the Kudalar, Sursi records speak of grants made by them to scholarly Brahmins. Grants were also made to Buddhist viharas. The Kadambas also patronized Jainism, several of the latter kings adopted the religion, and built numerous Jain Basadis temples that are scattered around Banavasi, Belagavi, Mangaluru and Goa. Kings and queens of the dynasty were renowned for their support of literature, arts and liberal grants to temples and educational institutions. Several descendants are scattered around present-day Goa, Belagavi, Mangaluru and Bengaluru. Adhikavi Pampa highly spoke of this kingdom in his writings. Following are his famous quotes on Banavasi, Aramkashamatodam Nenavadena Manam Banavasi Deshamam I shall cherish the sweet memories of Banavasi even when tortured, Maradambiyagi men Kogailyagi Putuvada Nandanadal Banavasi Deshadal as a bee or as nightingale should one born here in this beautiful country of Banavasi. Architecture <laughs> 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 The contribution of the Kadambas to the architectural heritage of Karnataka is certainly worthy of recognition. The Kadamba style can be identified and that it has a few things in common with the Shalukya and the Pallava styles. The most prominent feature of their architecture, basic as it was is their Shakara called Kadamba Shakara. The Shakara is pyramid-shaped and rises in steps without any decoration with a stupika or kalasha at the top. This style of shakara are used several centuries later in the Dadagadavali Hoysala temple and the Mahakuta temples in Hampi. Some of their temples also use perforated screen windows. It has also been pointed out that in architecture and sculpture, the Kadambas contributed to the foundation of the later Shalukya Hoysala style. The Madhikeshwara Lord Shiva temple built by them still exists in Banavasi. Built in the 10th century and renovated many times, the temple is a very good piece of art. The stone caught with wonderful carvings is one of the main tourist attractions in the temple. Topic: <inaudible> Impact. Kadambatsava, the festival of Kadamba. A festival is celebrated every year by government of Karnataka in honor of this kingdom. A popular Kannada film, Mayura starring Dr. Raj Kumar based on a novel of the same name by Devudu Narasimha Sastri celebrates the creation of the first Kannada kingdom. On 31 May 2005 Defence Minister Pranab Mukherjee commissioned India's most advanced and first dedicated military naval base named INS Kadamba after the Kadamba dynasty, in Karwar. See also Kadambas of Goa History of India History of South India History of Goa Talagunda Kadamba architecture List of Hindu empires and dynasties Notes